Hello chemistry, Ms. Brown here coming to you from the lab to work on our ionic covalent metallic bonding investigation. Normally you would be doing this in stations around the lab, uh, but I'm just going to bring the stations to you at home today. So what do you need? You'll probably want your periodic table um, and just uh, either you can print this off and write in it if you'd rather or just type have this pulled up on a half screen and then I uh, have the video ed puzzle on the other half screen. So you'll just be filling out some stuff. It's pretty short. You're just putting in your observations and then uh, looking at all the data holistically at the end. So this is not a supremely dangerous lab. So you'll notice my hair is down, not too big of a deal, um, but I am gonna keep my safety glasses on because there are some things if I touch them, I really wanna remind myself I should wash my hands first. I shouldn't be touching my face. Okay, let's get into it. We are looking at lots of different substances here. Um, and we are going to start thinking about the atomic scale, what we're seeing here that I've drawn out versus the bulk scale, right? What we see up here, I can touch that one, okay? So that's what this lab is all about, just connecting those two ideas and also just seeing how we test these properties. So you're just gonna follow along. What you need to be doing is as we introduce each one, think about if it's ionic, covalent, or metallic bonding and label it. And then also just jot down some notes if you've heard of this thing um, and what you're seeing, what it looks like, and if you have any experience with it. Up first, we have water. Maybe you have some experience with it. There is one molecule of water. There's a bunch of molecules of water. Second, we have sodium chloride NaCl table salt. So there it is in its, this is called a watch glass that it's in. So there's its bonding. So think about what's being shown with those little dotted lines. What's going on with the charges. Okay, next we have sucrose. AKA, this is table sugar. So this is what you might mix into some nice lemonade. There is one molecule of sucrose right there right now. Okay, and there it is in the watch glass. Next up, we have copper. So I have some copper in the watch glass, some copper wire here. And then that is its bonding modeled. Okay, there you go. Next we have KCl, which is potassium chloride. Okay, so we're starting to see, we have quite a few things that are just white powders. Okay, KCl, potassium chloride. Next, this is canola oil. And uh, the it's, it's made up of multiple different things. It's hard to get out all of it and have it be totally pure, but there's a lot of oleic acid in it. Um, and you might be thinking there's acid in oil. Hmm. We might need to learn about definitions of acids here soon. But oleic acid, there's its structure. There's one molecule of it. So we're kind of seeing some similar molecules. And there it is in the watch glass. Moves a little slower than the water did. Next we have ethanol, which you might have heard of. So there's one molecule of ethanol. And this is from a lab a couple years ago. And I don't know what got on it. So I'm definitely going to wash my hands. Anyway, there's some ethanol. And it has been evaporating. Hopefully I can do this lab quickly enough that it doesn't all go away. Okay. Here is one of my favorites. This is copper two chloride. Okay, so notice the charges. We have a subscript there, kind of interesting. Okay, there's copper two chloride. Beautiful, kind of sky blue color. Okay. Then we have something called glycerol. I don't want to look it up. Glycerol, if you want. Again, it moves very slowly. We'll be investigating some of that and how these might move in space. Glycerol, right there. So there's one molecule of glycerol. Again, this was also in that same lab that kind of met a hard end. Might need to make those over the summer. And finally, <laughs> I have some iron. So here's an iron nail. Here is the bonding structure of iron. So go ahead and get that all filled out. So now we just have some questions for you. So describe two things you're noticing about how I modeled the different bonds. So you can go back and look at some different ways that I modeled those and how you might pick out what's ionic, what's covalent, what's metallic. 
Um, and then you're just going to think about the subscript numbers. So I'm talking about in here. So see how there are subscripts right down there below versus what these mean. So I just want some ideas on that, okay? And then for the next part, when we move on to part two, what you're going to do, you hopefully have identified the types of bonding right here, ionic, covalent, or metallic. I want those to be transferred down here, but instead of typing them all again, just copy the whole column because it's the same number. You should be able to just paste it right in here and boom, they'll show up, okay? And then we'll start getting into the properties. So be ready to fill out this table. Our first section here is phase at 20 degrees. So let's just check on the phase. I will do all of these in order every single time. So, uh, and that's about the temperature of the lab-ish in Celsius here, okay? So water, I think we know what that is, okay? Uh, what's the phase of sodium chloride? What's our phase of sucrose? Now, phase of copper, so we're talking solid, liquid, or gas. Phase of potassium chloride. Okay. Phase of oleic acid. Phase of ethanol. Phase of copper 2 chloride, phase of our glycerol, and then phase of iron. Why might we care about the phase? Well, we talked about phases a long time ago and we really thought about things being attracted to each other. We said, hey, overall, these molecules, these atoms, these ions that make up compounds are attracted to each other and they get to be closer when they're in the solid phase and we have to put in energy to uh, move some of those attractive forces apart, right? To get them into the liquid phase and then especially when we take them into the gas phase. So think about how attracted to each other these things might be when you're thinking about what phase it tends to be in at 20 degrees Celsius. Okay, the next part of our lab is relative melting point. And when I say things like relative, we're gonna use high and low. We're gonna keep it really simple here. Now, when we're talking about a melting point, Basically, anything that you have said that is a liquid at room temperature, we're not going to be able to test its melting point, right? It's going to just have auto low. So like water is going to auto low melting point. But the rest of our solids, we're going to need to pull out and see when they melt, if they have a high or low melting temperature. So I will set that up. Why don't you fill in which things that you already said were liquid that then have a relatively low melting point? So I have set up our solids on a hot plate. And then one great thing to do is to write out what each thing is. So here's what I've done. I made a little key here. So we have sodium chloride, NaCl, sugar, copper across the top, KCl, potassium chloride, copper two chloride, and iron across the bottom. Okay, so you can kind of see them there. And then I have to be careful because aluminum can cause a uh, a little bit of a feedback loop in here. Let's see what's happening. So what we're looking for, remember, is melting point. So we're gonna see here if it's melting. And we are seeing a change in color. I have a guess about what's going on. We might have to save that for our chemical reactions unit. But if you look really closely here at this um, copper two chloride, it is not melting. It is changing color, but we haven't really seen any melting. Okay, we'll come back in a sec. Okay, so it's been maybe a minute or two. I checked my email just to see if anybody needed anything. Um, so as we look at these, I would say the sugar the sucrose right here, you can see it's starting to liquefy in the middle, okay? The salts kind of moved, the particles have moved away from each other, but when we touch them, they're still um, solid. There we go. Um, copper, have not melted the copper, have not melted the iron. Now, we are seeing a chemical reaction happen with the copper two chloride. We're seeing that color change. Let's just double check it using the other end of my stir rod here. So, still solid, okay, and then let's clean this off, okay, and check out that piece of KCL. Okay, still salt. So I would say in terms of having a low melting point, this has been on for a little while, that sugar right there, we can see it is melted. All right, so the next step that, 
we are working on here is our electrical conductivity. So this is going to be a yes or no situation. And I have a tool here called a multimeter, okay? Multimeter, because it can do a lot of things. There are a lot of different codes in here. You might recognize um, some symbols like for voltage or resistance or amps, um, and then some different sizes, some different scales we can measure that on, some direct current, some alternating current. What I have it turned to right here, this is the a tone, um, and then it, it basically gives you a tone if there is current. So if, if anything can flow through, and that's conductivity. So this is just called a conductivity test, okay? Does it conduct? And so what we do is we just touch these leads to something, let's just make sure it's working. So um, I know that this ring stand right here should conduct, so there we go, and we get a tone. It's not fun, but we got a tone, right? So what that means is that that is completing the circuit with our leads. Do not touch these together. You're not in the lab, but don't touch these together. Test it on something else. Okay, so what we're going to do is we are going to be going through and testing lots of these different um, substances, and I'll be cleaning these off, so it might take a little bit, but so it goes, okay? Okay, so I have my two leads. I have a, a clean rag here that uh, we can wipe these off on to clean between all of these tests. And so what we're going to be doing is just putting these into each of the substances and seeing if they make the tone, right? So let's just double check, like if I put these on the watch glasses, okay, the watch glass does not conduct, I'm not getting a tone, okay? Water, so just ask yourself, does water conduct, yes or no, what do you think? Okay, so let's put these in here. Ah. Water does not conduct. This is this is pure water, what I have here. It's deionized water, meaning it has all of the ions taken out. So actual pure water does not conduct electricity. It's all the extra stuff in our water uh, that does. So kind of fun fact. Okay, let's see about our sodium chloride. I would say no. Okay, I'm going to clean these off. Just glad you don't have to do all this. Maybe you'd want to. I don't know. Let me know in the comments. Okay. Let's check out our sucrose. Does not appear to conduct. Okay, I bet we could come up for some reasons why we think that that doesn't conduct. Let's try the copper wire. There we go, boom. Okay, I bet we're not too um, surprised by that one. Okay, potassium chloride. Nope, no conduction. Okay, I'm cleaning these off between everyone and I'm doing it off camera. Okay, here's the oleic acid. No, and sometimes I do try to get the leads a little bit closer together because there is a certain amount that it takes to actually trigger the sound. So sometimes, um, oh my gosh, my ethanol is completely gone. It completely evaporated. Let's get a little bit more here out of the bottle to test. That's interesting. We're actually going to explore that in the next couple weeks, like why some things evaporate quickly and why some things don't and why we might care about that in space. Okay, so I got a little more ethanol for you and it's gonna be hard for you to see. So I'm gonna move some things up so you can see them. Okay, so we saw the copper. Sorry, thanks for hanging in there. All right, so let's try our ethanol. See if it conducts. Looks like that's a no. Okay, copper two chloride, also a no. Glycerol, no, this is not very fun. Okay, and then iron. That's a yes, right? Boom, boom, boom. Oh, uh, can you even see it? Let's make sure you can see it so you know I'm not making things up. There's iron, boom. Okay, so now we know what conducts as a solid and what doesn't. All right, the next part of this is whether or not they dissolve in water. So again, like we talked about, I'm using deionized water, so it does not have ions in it. It is just pure, as close to just pure water molecules as we can possibly get, okay? So that's what we're gonna be testing. We wanna make sure that that's always the same. So water, is water soluble in water? Is it even solubility if you're mixing it with the same thing? I don't know. And what do we mean by soluble, right? So if it dissolves, it, if, if it evenly distributes amongst the water molecules instead of just staying in one, Piece. So let's try the salt. So I'll try to hold these up to the camera. Does that look like it's dissolving at least somewhat? 
I think so. We can come back and check it. We also can rely a bit on our own experience. Like does salt dissolve into water? Here's the sugar. Yeah, it looks, I might need more. It actually takes a fair amount of water to dissolve sugar, but so that looks like it's dissolving for sure. Okay, copper, what do we think? Is that gonna dissolve in water? Doesn't look like it. Okay, potassium chloride, what do we think here? Looks like it's dissolving. Okay, oil and water, do those dissolve into each other? The water's just kind of sitting there. Hmm, we're also going to explore that in our next unit, why that's happening, which is going to be fun. Okay, ethanol and water. Hmm, can you see those crazy lines in there? Yeah. Hmm, okay, you might have to, you might just have to decide what you think that is, if you think it's soluble or not. Okay, copper to chloride. Oh, I just love it, it makes such a cool color. All right. Uh, what do we see? It looks like the actual liquid is turning blue. I would say that that copper is dissolved in there. One thing I love thinking about is this is pure copper. This is copper bonded as an ion to chloride ions and such a difference. This just has those chloride ions added. Okay, glycerol. Again, I'm seeing lines. Doesn't really look like it's mixing super Okay, and then um, what do we think? What's gonna happen to those nails? Is it gonna dissolve? <laughs> no, I don't have a strong acid here. Okay, cool. So that's the solubility test. Let's go back. There were a few we weren't quite sure about. I would say that not, I don't, I probably don't have enough water, but some of the salt has definitely dissolved in here. Same with the sugar, we can see it's cloudy, but some of it has definitely dissolved. Um, yeah, the case heal, that's actually dissolving pretty well. Okay, ooh, this is just getting even better, dissolving. Oops, oh no, I dropped some in there. I'm gonna have to redo that test. Okay, we'll get that going again. Because next thing we're going to do is now that they've dissolved, we're actually going to test if these conduct. Okay, we have moved on to our final test. I reset up my potassium chloride. Don't worry, the copper two chloride is all in the background there. Okay. Um, so something that's interesting is because it, there's a certain threshold to meet to get this to go off. I do want to actually pay attention to the numbers to see if we're getting some conductivity going on. Okay, so let's just see. I've cleaned off my leads pretty well. So water, nothing. Okay, sodium chloride. It's not beeping, but did you see the number jump on the multimeter? Yeah, yeah, we're seeing a big thing there. Okay. So I would say, I would give that a yes. Let's see what other data we can get. Let's see, let's look at sucrose. Okay, so I'm just seeing a one, no change. Again, I'm cleaning off my leads between each one. Okay, so copper, it didn't really dissolve, so that shouldn't count. KCL, again, seeing a big jump in numbers. Okay, um, our oil didn't really dissolve in water, so we can't do a conductivity test. The ethanol did kind of dissolve. No change. Okay, oops, I touched my leads. Okay, now let's check out that copper to chloride. Ho oh, ho, that's a good one. Good one for conductance. It's interesting that the copper one is the best out of uh, the rest of our ionic compounds, kind of interesting. Um, okay, okay, that went off. Nice job, copper. Okay, glycerol, I don't know if you decided if this dissolved or not, but we're not getting any conductance there. Okay, and what, well, let's just check these. So the, the Iron in the water doesn't actually do anything, right? So if I put it on the actual nail, we're getting conductance over here, nothing. And let's just double check, same with the copper. So the water doesn't do anything, there it conducts. Okay, so we are almost done. The last thing here is something that last year in chem we did a lot with, specific heat. You probably saw this in physical science. I'm just gonna talk about it because it is interesting information, especially for what we need to know for space. So specific heat, we're not gonna worry too much about the units like in terms of memorizing them, but what it is, these numbers represent the amount of energy it takes to increase the temperature of one gram of the substance, one degree Celsius. So if we take water, for instance, it takes 4.18 joules our unit of energy to heat up one gram, one degree Celsius, right? So if it was 34 degrees Celsius, I wanted to make it 35, I'd have to put in that much energy. 
Okay. And then what I want you to do is just compare all of the numbers here, right? Because we see some are a lot lower and then some are higher. Okay. So that's just, you can kind of think about this as their heat resistance, which is what we're thinking about for that heat shield. Okay. So take some time. You're going to color code, think about what properties go with what type of bonding, and then organize them here for your future reference. So I'd like to see these filled out with what uh, patterns you're seeing for each type of bonding. Thanks for joining in the lab. And then the end of this Ed Puzzle, if you have any questions or needs, pop them into the Ed Puzzle. I'll be checking those so I can get back to you and help you. Thanks, everybody.